Hi, welcome to PR Tech Talk. Setting up timers, GPIO, interrupts, compile, program, and finally debug your application. To see the blinking indicating success can be initially a very challenging task. In this video, we will set up a bare metal blinky project using the Renaissance E Square Studio and the EKRA2L1. Welcome! Hi! In the first video, we installed a free of charge development environment from Renaissance to E Square Studio. And in the next video, we also installed a complementary example project bundle and tested a Blinky project. In this video, I will show how to make your own project. Set up the first timer GPIO and make the LED Blinky and using a software delay loop in this uh, instance. I will also show some tips and tricks in the e Square Studio. To create a new project in eSquare Studio, we go to File, New, C, C++ Project, and for this instance we are using the RA2L1 MCU, so we choose the RA device. And we hit Next. We enter a project name In this uh, menu we see which FSP version we have uh, Which board we are using And uh, you here have custom user board if I now use the EKRA2L1, which is the device that we have on the table at the moment, we also get the correct MCU populated. We put next, and we don't want an Artos. So here we get greeted by two choices, either a bare metal blinky, and that is the easy way, but we will make it more difficult today. So we will choose the bare metal minimal. Uh, so if we look here, it says bare metal FSP project that includes the BSP. And uh, in this case, we are using the EKRA2L1 board where there is already a BSP available, where all the pins and the ports are set up for us. And it says also this project will initialize clocks, pins, stacks and the C runtime environment, which is quite crucial to remember. So we hit finish again. ask us if it wanted to open the FSP configuration perspective and we do want that. It took some time, uh, but now it's loaded, and what we are greeted with here is the FSP configuration uh, menu, where we see the device colored with all the pins already set up for us with the BSP for this uh, evaluation board, the EKRI2L1. So we do like this, we close the project. We highlight it again and I delete it and delete project contents on disk as well so there is no duplicate on it. So we do it in once more new C project 
the Ranasos RA, same as before. We give it a name. And we do like this once more. And the reason for it, because then we get the, the correct device. But I unselect it, so we don't use the BSP for any board. We, we have, uh, so we don't have any um, BSP configuration in it. Next, next again, and the same thing, bare metal minimal. The difference we now will see with the MCU pin uh, uh, layout is that there is much less colors uh, because uh, there is no pins uh, occupied more than what is absolutely needed for the device. Right, so if we then again double click on the MCU package, we now see that there is quite many pins that are uh, still selected, but those are the VDD and VCC and uh, the communication for the serial, uh, communication for the programming the device. But all the GPIOs uh, and the LEDs, etc., they, they are not populated at the moment. So if we take a look here, we have the we are now in the FSP configuration file, and we have here a tab, tabs, and where we look into the BSP, and there is a custom user board because we don't have any inputs on on where the LEDs are, etc. So to start a new project, uh, we need to first of all to have uh, some clock up and running. And to do this, we take a look at the schematics for the de device itself, which I have here. So this is the EKRA2L1. So we scroll down. Here we have the regulator, and here we have the user buttons, which can be useful, but not in this one because we only toggle a LED. But the user LEDs, we can see that there are three of them here. And it's located on P505, 504 and 503. We will use the middle one, which is port 504, and it's a green LED, also called LED2. But we were out for uh, the timing for the clock, how this, how this board is set up. Here we have the J tags. And finally, the, the clocks. So we can see here on the schematics that there are two external clocks uh, delivered on the boards. There is a 20 megahertz crystal and there is a 32 kilohertz crystal as well. However, they are not connected to device. Uh, we need to solder bridge these if we are going to use the 20 megahertz crystal or the 32 megahertz kilo, uh, 32 kilohertz crystal. So from the very beginning, they are not connected. They are present at the board, but they are not connected to the device. So uh, since I have not uh, soldered these, uh, we need to use uh, internal oscillators instead. So then we need to look into the what we have for timers and clocks. So I, I look into the data sheet. Uh, I have the data sheet here for the device. And there are some clocks internal on it. So we have the main clock oscillator, the sub clock, the high speed, etc. And we are going to use the high speed on chip oscillator, also uh, called HOCO. So if we go back then to the FSP configuration, we know that we're going to use the HOCO. So that one is selected here, 
clock source HLCO. If we select something else here, then we have the external clocks here. So the, there is an internal clock already set up for us on 48 megahertz. So the clock is already set up, that is good. The next thing to have an LED blinking, we need to have a port. And if we remember what we saw in the schematics, we had it on port 5. And we said that we are going to use the port 503, if I'm not incorrectly. 504, 504, sorry. Uh, so, we have here the pin 504. We also see in the MCU device that that is red light, so we can see where it is. So we can get now that uh, a uh, symbolic name, and it's named in the schematics for LED2, so I think that is a good name. Uh, what mode do we want on it? Uh, currently, from the very beginning, it's disabled, but we want to have it driving an LED. And uh, the device was... Uh, so we need to have it as an initial low, otherwise it will turn on immediately when we boot the device. And now the GPIO is set, so it's initial low. And so it's already up here. So that is done. So we have everything set up. So now we need to generate this uh, setup, these configurations that we made. So we hit the project, generate project content. So that is done. We now can change to perspective to the C, C++. And now we have a tab field up here where we can populate we go to the source folder and there we have the HAL entry C. That is our main C file. If we double click on that one, it will open up here. There is a lot of initializations here and then we have also the comment, add your own code here. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to have an LED blinking. So to make a small while one loop so we have a small while one loop there so what do we want to do we want to toggle the LED uh, and to do this we need to go down here on, on the bare metal we can read through all the documentations but we can also go down here for the development assistance and See here, here we have a HAL common and a GIO port driver. And if we remember from the very beginning, we said that the code already initialized the ports, the pins and the uh, timers, etc. for us. So what we need now is to, to write to the port, write to the pin, sorry. So we can see here for pin, pin write. We can take that one drag it up and there we have the, the call to this device. The status, if in this case we're not going to use it because we can get an error flag and we can capture the error flag there, but in this case we're just going to omit that one. So then it asks us for the pin. So which pin are we going to use? Well, we said it was LED2. So that's an easy one. And the level, uh, then we can use uh, the BSP function for this one. And in the very beginning, I know the result, but we can go to the configuration and on the BSP tab, sorry, the summary, there is a Renaissance software user manual. So in the flock flexible software package documentation, we can go to the search window and start writing our search term, which is BSP. And there is a lot of things coming up. We think then uh, it was the first one was high. So we see there BSP 
IO level high. So we take that one. And we put here instead. Okay, now the line is done. Uh, we make a copy of this one and hit low. Now we need to have some delay and we don't need to make our delay loop ourselves. We can go back to the documentation again and there is a delay unit. If we hit that one it says that there is available soft R software R underscore BSP software delay. And it also needed some units and some. So we take milliseconds here. 500 milliseconds. That can be nice. Great. So, okay, so now the, the code is done. We have setting the LED high. Uh, we wait 500 milliseconds. We put the pin low and we wait 500 milliseconds. And then we leap back. So we have our small blinky here. We build the project. and there is no errors and no, no warnings. We debug the code, so it's going down into the device itself. It's also now changing to the debug perspective. Okay, we hit launch and we will hold at the first entry and we will hit enter again. And we can see success on the development board where the LED to the green one is now blinking at 50 Hz. So that was building a bare metal project without any BSP for the device, for the board itself, but setting it up. It was a very simple project, but I think it will give you some idea on how to set up instead of just taking a project from the very beginning and modify that one. Okay, see you in the next one. Uh, there we will use uh, some uh, interrupts and timers instead to generate the uh, blinky sequence instead of uh, having a small uh, software BSP delay time. See you in the next one. Have a nice one. Bye.